Ever heard of a cat having nine lives? Sure. How about a spaceship? No? <laughs> then you're in for a surprise. Hello everybody and welcome. Those of you who follow me on Twitter or Mastodon might have seen this tweet where I complain about trying to launch this vehicle here into orbit in Kerbal Space Program 2. By the way, thanks for following me wherever you do, I really appreciate it. Links to all my socials are in the description, but mainly I would like you to subscribe and watch every video, of course, and like every video and comment under every video. Let that AI controlling YouTube know that this is the stuff you want to watch. Resist the machine, overlords! Yeah, okay, enough of that. Where was I? Ah, yes, Kerbal Space Program 2 and this spaceship. Why is it so large? And why did I build the launcher backwards? Sort of. Here's the thing. I finally want to visit the planet Draz and see for myself what has changed compared to the original game, because there apparently have been quite a few changes. Yeah, I know that other people have already done that, but I deliberately haven't watched those videos because I want to experience it for myself first. But I also didn't just want to do a boring run-of-the-mill five-part lander and the boring old single-stick rocket. You've entered the Shadow Zone and here we build big. At least we did so in the original Kerbal Space Program. Unfortunately, Kerbal Space Program 2 is still very much in early access and this means two things. Lousy performance and many bugs. But here's a little preview of what I want to show you when I'm finally able to. This submarine kind of thing is the lander I want to fly to Draz. And this is what's in it. A little hot rod, or dragster, or whatever you want to call it. It's a nice little rover with another trick up its sleeve, which I'm not going to spoil now, because I want you to watch the mission video if I ever manage to successfully fly that mission. So in order to deliver this Draz dragster in style, I designed that lander that looked a bit like a cartoon submarine. And in order for that to get to Draz with some pizzazz and plenty of Delta V, I designed this mothership. Neat, right? Neat, but large and a bit heavy, but honestly not that much, just around 400 tons all considered. My first attempt getting it into orbit was this here. Classic payload on top booster at the bottom design with a massive fairing. A fairing that's kind of pointless with the current way aerodynamics behave in KSP2. This build here was plagued with all kinds of issues, but I managed to get it into orbit somehow. But then I made a crucial mistake. I switched to the tracking station to fast forward to my DRAS transfer window and when I came back, one of the engine nacelles decided to just be free and do its own thing. Well, not completely its own thing, because when I fired up the engines of the main ship, that stray engine also lit up. So that wasn't good. I then tried again with a different style of launcher. A launcher that would be able to not just get this into orbit, but up to a thousand tons of payload, no matter the shape. That's why all the engines are on top, because if you pull an unwieldy payload behind you, it's much more stable than trying to push it against aerodynamic forces. That's a lesson I had already learned in KSP1 with some of the crazier builds I did back then. And with this we finally come to the title of the video. The Undead Spaceship. Or the Spaceship with Nine Lives. Or Why won't you die? One does not simply slay the Kraken. I don't know, I usually don't have my video titles ready until right before publishing them, so I don't know. So what's the deal here? After a while of flying this thing, the game says, oh no, it's broken, and then prompts you to revert. But that's not really what's going on. If you quickly pause the game so the vehicle doesn't fly away from you, you can switch back to it with double click on any part of it. By the way, this is also how you can switch vessels in an atmosphere when the game says it can't when trying the usual keyboard shortcuts. Just pause and double click the other vehicle. 
It also works without pausing, but this keeps everything steady and in view and makes the switching easier. Anyway, when I was back in control of the main ship, I saw that nothing was in fact broken, contrary to what the game tried to make me believe. What a sneaky little piece of software! Just reactivate SAS and gently increase the throttle and you're back in business. Well, at least for a while, because inevitably the same vessel destroyed message will come up again. And again. And again. But in theory, you could probably still fly this thing into orbit by limping along and switching from destruction to destruction. It's the undying spaceship destroyed, but not at the same time. Quantum technology? Schrodinger's rocket? It's so absurd that this kind of thing is possible and I would really like to know how it is even possible. For now though, it did two things. First, it prevented me from doing the mission as intended, as I outlined it in the beginning of the video. So if you expected this to end with a cool shot of Drez in KSP2, I'm sorry, that's not going to happen. But the second thing was that it gave me a fun idea for a video. I mean, how often do you have an immortal rocket in front of you? Anyway, I'm going back to the drawing board. Maybe I'll be able to show off what this Drez dragster can do next week. Oh, and maybe we have some more information on the upcoming patch 2 for KSP 2. That's going to be exciting to see for sure, whenever that will be. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel for more and follow me on my social thingies. The links are in the description. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.